Every year in April, American Mahjong players eagerly await the release of the National Mahjong League card. In this video, I'm going to share with you my analysis, findings, and tips for a smooth transition. If you're new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. I'm going to share my analysis, findings, and tips for a smooth transition using a presentation. If you have any questions along the way, write them in the comment section below the video. Also, look for a link to a handout in the video description. Let's dig into the new card analysis and at the end, I'll share tips for a smooth transition. The National Mahjong League publishes their annual card of valid hands for American Mahjong players in April. The rules of the game rarely change. The methods used to describe the hands stay the same. The categories of hands typically stay the same. The changes are in the shapes and patterns of the hands. We're going to start with statistics, but first you need to know that the hand count includes line level variations. For example, evens number three is counted as two hands. We're going to begin with the difficulty or hand value. 65% of the hands on the card are relatively easy. These are the 25 point hands. 18% of the hands are medium difficulty. These are the 30 point hands. 17% of the hands are hard. These are the 40 to 85 point hands. Here's the table showing the hand count and percentage for this year's card compared to last year's card. And you can see that the differences are nominal. We do have two more open hands this year and we have one less quint. All in all, this appears to be a balanced card. For beginners, there's a plethora of hands to choose from because 65% of the hands are relatively easy. For intermediate and advanced players, there are a lot of challenging hands that we'll talk about in a few minutes. Here are the categories. Odds, we have 18%, 12 hands. Consecutive run, 17%, 11 hands. Evens, 15%, 10 hands. 369, 12%, 8 hands. Wins and Dragons, 11%, 7 hands. Singles and Pairs, 9%, 6 hands. Year, 8%, 5 hands. Quince, 6%, 4 hands. And Like Numbers, 5%, 3 hands. Here's the table showing the count and percentage for this year's card compared to last year's card. And you can see that the differences, again, are nominal. Odds has the highest hand count, so it has the most choices. There's one more hand in odds than in consecutive run, but consecutive run has far greater flexibility. So if you are between hands or categories with equitable potential, choose consecutive run. Also noteworthy is that there are three hands in this category that span all five numbers, one, three, five, seven, nine. That would be the first hand showing two options. The other hands are either little odds, one, three, five, or big odds, five, seven, nine. So if you don't have all five tiles, one, three, five, seven, nine, in either one suit or all suits, Focus your attention on either little odds or big odds. Consecutive run is the most flexible category on the card, and this will never change. The reason for this is that there are three suits numbered one to nine with patterns that span up to five numbers. The first hand has two options with five numbers, and all the other hands span two to four numbers. If you choose to play a hand in this category and you have mixed suits, Keep tiles in a four number range around your multiples or the predominant pattern for the greatest flexibility. Evens will be affected by year tiles. This applies through this decade. Also, if you're playing a consecutive run hand, 
consider starting the series at three unless you already have twos in your hand because anyone in the evens category or year category will be vying for those little numbers. Although the 369 category has a fair number of hands, it's not very flexible because there are only three number tiles to work with and there is a two number spread between each one. Make sure that you have a good representation of these tiles if you play this category. The Winds and Dragons category has only one north-south and one east-west option this year. If you decide to play this category, be mindful of the tiles being discarded or held in the early game so you can switch to something else if you need to. Year tiles will always be risky to pass. This applies through this decade. Evens are going to be affected and there are two more hands this year. That may seem like a nominal change, but anyone playing in the year category will be competing for twos. For the same reason, if you're playing a consecutive run hand, consider starting the series at three unless you already have twos in your hand. Incidentally, there are consecutive run options in both quints and singles and pairs. Consider starting your series at three if you're playing those hands. The any quint is back. You can use any wind with any dragon and any number tile regardless of suit. In the like number category, there are three hands to choose from, but don't be deceived. There are like number hands all over the card and we'll look into that in a few minutes. There are seven singles and pair hands this year, but the big year hand is in the year category. This one will be tough, so if you dot your winning hands, try to win this one early because everyone will be adjusting to this year's hands and strategies. These are the predominant attributes, big multiples, which are Pungs, Kongs, and with a Joker a Quint. 86%, 57 hands. Mixed suits, 68%. 45 hands. Pairs, 62%, 41 hands. Like numbers, 47%, nearly half at 31 hands. Flowers, 38%, or 25 hands. Unique shape, 35%, 23 hands. One suit, 29%, 19 hands. Dragons, 29%, 19 hands, and wins, 14%, nine hands. There are many attributes that impact decision-making. The list is lengthy and the attributes vary widely. These are the attributes that are predominant this year. American Mahjong is a game of multiples, pair, pung, kong, quint, since 86% of the hands have big multiples, gather supporting tiles for the greatest flexibility and to optimize your potential to win. There's a significant increase in the number of hands in mixed suits with or without dragons at 68%, up by five. Don't be distracted by one suit. There's a significant decrease in the number of hands with pairs, down by seven. When playing an exposable hand with pairs, secure one pair before committing to that hand with an exposure. There's a significant increase in the number of hands with like numbers, 47%, nearly half, up by five. Passing like numbers is almost as risky as passing a pair. Consider passing like numbers if you know what hand you're playing and there are no gaps. There's a significant increase in the number of hands with pairs of flowers, up by six. There are flowers in every category on the card. Also, instead of quints of flowers, there are double pungs of flowers. These tiles will always be a hot commodity regardless of the year, and passing them should be a rarity. Also, survey exposures and discards to count the cost of discarding them in the end game. There are four recurring and prevalent shapes that are familiar. We'll look at those in a minute. 
35% of the hands have a unique shape, so always check the card before claiming your first discard and before declaring Mahjong, especially in the beginning. I think this number of unique shapes will be a nice challenge for intermediate and advanced players. There's one additional hand for one suit options, with or without dragons, but they make up only 29% of the hands compared to mixed suits, with or without dragons, making up 68% of the hands. So 29% one suit, 68% mixed suits. For this reason, Consider gathering all the tiles for a given category, regardless of suit, so that you have greater flexibility. Winds and Dragons will be challenging, as I stated earlier in the presentation. There are dragons in 29% of the hands, 10 more than winds. Pass winds before passing dragons. Also noteworthy is that there are dragons in every category on the card this year. Quince and singles and pairs have one dragon hand each. Other than the year category, all the other categories have two dragon hands, so they have increased use. There are fewer hands with wins. However, seven include big multiples, puns and kongs. Four include pairs and three include singles. If you pass wins, pass one at a time and try not to pass east and west together because there are two hands with single east and west. The shapes of the hands on the card change from year to year. So it's important to study these shapes to minimize invalid exposures. Again, the list is lengthy and the shapes vary widely. These are the shapes that are predominant this year. The first shape with eight hands is Pung Pung Kong Kong. The next shape is Pear Pung Pear Pung Kong, seven hands. Followed by Pung Kong Pung Kong, six hands and pair, kong, kong, kong. Pair, triple kong, five hands. This means 35% of the hands on the card have a unique shape. Check the card before committing to an exposure or to declaring mahjong. Let's talk about the carryover hands. These are the hands that were on last year's card that are on this year's card. The first is consecutive run number three in either one suit or mixed suit. Pair of flowers, triple calm. The next is odds number one, one suit pyramid or mixed suit pyramid. Pair, pung, kong, pung, pair. One suit or mixed suits. Winds and Dragons, number seven, the concealed hand with Pungs of Dragons, single east-west, Pungs of north-south. 369, number five, Kong Kong, Pung Pung, three six Kongs, and then Pungs of Nines in the other two suits. Having only six carryover hands means a slow start for everyone. Be patient with yourself and others. Let's talk about hot commodities. These are tiles that are risky to pass during the Charleston and risky to discard in the end game. So situational awareness is going to be key in making sure that you're not giving away these hot commodities and helping your opponents build their hand. The first would be flowers. There are two fewer hands with flowers, but 14 have pairs, six have pungs, and three have double pungs. Four have kongs. Flowers will always be hot. Year tiles will always be risky to pass, 
especially this decade. Evens are going to be affected and there are two more of them this year. If you're playing a consecutive run hand, consider starting the series at three, unless you already have twos in your hand. Dragons. There are 10 more hands with dragons than wins. There are two or more dragon hands in almost every category. The exceptions are in quints and singles in pairs, where there's one hand each. Wins. There are fewer hands, but four have high values and three have singles or pairs. Like numbers, 47% of hands include like numbers. That's an increase of five hands. I highly recommend that you not pass like numbers. It's almost as risky as passing a pair. There are no safe discards. There are singles or pairs of every tile in the set. Survey discards and exposures, then count the cost of discarding, especially in the end game. Let's talk about categories that share tiles, which allow you to play both to a certain point in time. I like to call these tandem categories. The first is the year category. This tandems well with evens and like numbers. Here's an example of a year hand that would tandem with evens or like numbers with twos. Evens tandems well with consecutive run with omissions or fillers. So for example, if you draw threes, you might be able to switch to two, three, four, or even if you get a five, you could switch to four, five, six. Like numbers can tandem with every category on the card because there are like numbers in every category on the card. 47% of the hands include like numbers. Quints can tandem with evens with the second quint. Consecutive run or like numbers with the third quint. Consecutive run can tandem with evens. If you draw in six, eight, let's say, you could play two, four, six, eight, because this hand has twos and fours. You would need to omit tiles potentially and also obtain those fillers. Consecutive run number six has like numbers, so you can use those eights in this case and play like numbers depending on the tiles you pick. You could also switch to odds if you happen to get fives. So with fillers, you could play big odds using the sevens and the nines. Odds can tandem with like numbers in this particular hand. We've got threes and ones. It can also tandem with consecutive run if you draw in twos or fours. So with either omissions or fillers, you can switch to either like numbers or consecutive run. With wins and dragons, you can tandem with consecutive run because there's a short run in the north, south, east, west hands. You could also tandem with like numbers with wins and dragons number four, two Kongs of number tiles. 369 can tandem with like numbers. In this particular hand, you have nines. So if you draw dragons or flowers, you might be able to switch to like numbers. The singles and pairs category have hands that can be tandem with any other category on the card, except for quints, primarily because in the singles and pairs category, you have little multiples. And in quints, with one exception, you have big multiples. The second hand, which is an even hand, you do have a pair in there. It would be a stretch to tandem with quints from a singles and pairs hand. The first singles and pairs hand tandems with wins and dragons. The second singles and pairs hand tandems with odds. The third singles and pairs hand tandems with consecutive run, and so does the fourth singles and pairs hand. The fifth singles and pairs hand 
tandems with evens. This is the one that you might be able to make work with that second quint. And the last hand is a three, six, nine hand. So you can tandem this particular hand with the three, six, nine category. I'd like to share top three mistakes made when playing with a new card. Number one, passing risky tiles in the Charleston. Make sure that you hold or make use of these tiles and pass them rarely. These would be the year tiles, like numbers, dragons, and wins. Number two, claiming a discard for an exposure on a concealed hand. Always check the card before committing to an exposure. Number three, playing a hand from the previous year. Always check the card before committing to an exposure or declaring Mahjong. Here are my tips for a smooth transition. Number one, build around strength. Optimize your potential by building around multiples with an adaptive style of play. When you get your dealt hand, identify the multiples, then pick one or two categories that can use the multiples with as many of the remaining tiles. If you don't have multiples, identify the predominant pattern and hold tiles for the category that uses them. When a multiple forms, reassess. Gather all the tiles that can be used in the categories you're playing. When you run out of discards, pick a category or pick a hand to free up more discards. Number two, practice makes progress. If you have a set of tiles at home, do hands-on exercises. There are links in the video description below for demonstrations of each skill builder. Number three, play often and observe. Play live when you can. Play with peers to relax and have fun. Play with advanced players to learn by observation. Play online between in-person games. Also watch my videos. I have an American Mahjong lesson strategy playlist and strategy theory videos. I also have recurring skill builders that I release on Mondays. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and on my website just by searching for Mahjong Central or Michelle Frizzell. I hope you found my analysis, findings, and tips for a smooth transition helpful. If you have any questions about the content, write them in the comment section below the video. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.